So key ideas here. Um, the concept that we're gonna start this unit focused on is, is what we call inheritance. Um, we use the word inheritance to make kind of an extended analogy with the idea of like inheritance and genetics, right? So children inherit traits from their parents. Okay, that's the extended analogy that we're gonna use in terms of our classes. Um, by inheritance, what we mean by that is we're gonna have some existing class from which we are gonna create a new, more specific class, okay? Um, when we do this, this new class inherits, that is contains all of the attributes. And when we say attributes in computer science and Java think instance variables, so it contains all of the attributes and behaviors. And when we say behaviors in computer science, think Java methods um, of the existing class. Okay. So the child class has all of the same instance variables and all of the same methods as its parent class. In addition, the child can be specialized. It can have some new attributes. It can declare new instance variables. It can have some new behaviors, can declare some new methods. It can redefine the behaviors that it inherits um, by redefining those methods that it inherits from its parents. This is really, really powerful in object-oriented programming languages because it promotes a tremendous amount of software reuse, which is less code that we have to write, debug, maintain, fix, um, which is huge. We've seen this a little bit in the picture lab. So I did a really brief introduction to the idea of inheritance back when we were doing activity five in the picture lab, because we saw that the picture class was a child class of the simple picture class. And the picture class had all of the attributes and all of the methods of the simple picture class, right? It inherited like the get pixels 2D method. Um, and we were able to add additional methods to the picture class, like when you wrote crop and copy and mirror horizontal um, and all the other methods that you added to the picture class. Um, so we have a little bit of context for this, but we're, we're definitely gonna focus on, on more stuff. A couple of terms that you're gonna see, the, the existing class from which the new class is derived, um, or from which the new class inherits, we use a couple different verbs there, um, or from which the new class is extended, a lot of different verbs. We refer to that existing class as the superclass. Um, so sometimes we use the term superclass and subclass to describe that relationship. Sometimes based on the analogy with like genetics, we use parent class and child class. Um, sometimes you'll also see base class used um, that sometimes is a more specialized meaning, but just in case you do come across that. I'm gonna try to stick with superclass and subclass for consistency um, because it mirrors one of the key words that we're gonna see um, when we start writing some code. Um, but all of these are, are reasonable ways to refer to an inheritance relationship. Another thing that I mentioned in ch when we did activity five in the picture lab, but we're definitely gonna focus a lot more on in this unit, is that inheritance is a fundamentally different type of relationship than all the, um, than the relationship we've been dealing with so far in terms of our existing classes. So inheritance is what we call an is a relationship. We say a picture is a simple picture. Okay, and we'll see some other examples here in a moment. Everything else we've done this year has been a has a relationship. A picture has a 2D array of pixels. A pixel has a color. A turtle has a pen color. A turtle has a X and Y location, right? Those are all has a relationships. This is a fundamentally different type of relationship, um, which we refer to is a. These little is a has a phrases are surprisingly helpful when we're not sure what type of relationship it is because we can basically ask ourselves a question. We can say, we could say, for example, like, is a picture, a picture is a simple picture or a picture has a simple picture? Which of those makes more sense? And we can check ourselves. Or we could say a pixel is a color or a pixel has a color. Which of those two makes sense? 
and it lets us know what type of relationship it is. Um, up until now, it's been easy because we only have one type of relationship. There are always has a relationships. Now that we're introducing inheritance, um, things get a little bit more, more complicated. Here's an example that we're gonna be using um, throughout the beginning part of this unit. We're gonna be writing some code together to create a, um, what we call a class hierarchy. That is the super and subclasses um, related to questions that are part of some testing software. Okay. So this is a UML design class diagram like we've seen before, but what's new, I mean, it showed up in activity five, but it's still new, is the idea that instead of just lines connecting our classes, we now have this triangle. And the point of the triangle is pointing at the question class. And that triangle describes the is a relationship as opposed to a has a relationship. So from looking at this diagram, we can see that a fill-in question is a question and a choice question is a question. Meaning the question class is our superclass and fill-in question and choice question are our subclasses. This kind of makes sense. There are certain attributes, there are certain behaviors that apply to all questions on a test, right? All questions on a test have a prompt, um, as an example. Um, all questions on a test can be scored to see if they're answered correctly or incorrectly. Um, but we can also see that there are different type, fundamentally different types of questions that are gonna have different attributes and different behaviors. A choice question, think of like multiple choice questions, it's gonna have a list of potential choices to choose from, like A, B, C, D, right? A fill-in question is gonna have the concept of there's a blank somewhere in the prompt and a string that we're gonna have to compare against to see if they filled in the blank right. Okay. Um, so that's why we have this, this type of a relationship. Um, so we're gonna be exploring this specific example um, throughout for the next couple of days. Earlier, I claimed that inheritance promoted software reuse. I didn't explain why. Um, so let's, let's focus a little bit more on that so we appreciate why this is such a powerful concept. A subclass inherits all the methods of the superclass. That's where the software reuse comes from. Um, so back to this example, whatever methods are in common for all questions, we don't have to rewrite that code in fill-in question, and we don't have to rewrite that code in choice question because both of these subclasses inherit all the methods from the question class. So that saves us a lot of effort when we're writing the code. The code probably that we write doesn't work anyway, so we have to debug it, but we only have to debug it in one place and fix it in one place, and then it's gonna work for all of our questions. So that is really, really helpful. The other way this promotes reuse is through what we call the substitution principle. Um, this is something new. So, so far this year, the type of our variable has always matched the type of the class when we created a new object, right? So the very first week of school, we said turtle crush equals new turtle. The type of the variable is turtle, the new object we're creating is also a turtle. So we're making a new turtle and assigning a reference to a variable of type turtle. Those types always matched. That doesn't have to be the case in Java and it won't be anymore. The substitution principle says, hey, we can use a subclass type, or rather we can pass a reference to a subclass object to a method that expects a superclass type, okay? Let's make that more concrete. Let's say there's a method that expects one parameter of type question. We can pass a reference to a choice question object because a choice question is a question, that's okay. We can also pass a reference to a fill-in question object because a fill-in question is a question. So that's okay, right? This gives us a lot of flexibility because there are certain methods that don't really care if it's a choice question or fill-in question. Maybe we're just call it, trying to figure out which questions were answered correctly. And so we can pass either of those two and it works okay. It does not work the other way. 
This is a relationship is a one-way relationship. A fill-in question is a question, but a question is not a fill-in question, right? It doesn't work that way. Okay. It's kind of like saying another example of a, a, a class hierarchy could be we could have a super class of type animal, and then we could have subclasses of like cat and dog. A cat is an animal. That makes sense. An animal isn't a cat, right? Well, not necessarily, right? Um, so it doesn't go the other way. So if a method expects a parameter of type fill in question, we cannot pass a reference to a question object because a question object is not a fill-in question object. Okay. We could only pass a reference to a fill-in question object or any subclasses of that. That would be okay too. So the substitution principle only works one way in terms of that is a relationship. When we as humans, when we tend to learn about something shiny and new, we want to use it everywhere, okay? And so this is a pitfall that we have to watch out for in this unit. Inheritance is our shiny new thing, and we get excited by that, and we try to use inheritance for everything. Most of the time, we don't need inheritance. We got by this whole year so far without doing any inheritance. Um, so here's some guidelines in terms of when is inheritance appropriate and when is it not appropriate. Inheritance is appropriate when the objects have different behaviors, okay? Back to our example here, a fill-in question with a blank in it fundamentally behaves differently than a multiple choice question with choices A, B, C, D. They're fundamental different behaviors. Inheritance is a good way to address that. Okay. Inheritance is not appropriate when objects simply have different values. Okay. If we want a turtle with a red pen and a turtle with a blue pen, we wouldn't create a subclass of turtle called red turtle and another subclass of turtle called blue turtle. In fact, we, we didn't do that, right? We would instead just have an instance variable pen color that we set to red or blue. It's just a value. It's not a different behavior. Okay. So watch out for this trap. Don't try to make everything some sort of superclass subclass relationship. Um, it's a very powerful tool, um, but one that we only need to use occasionally. Um, and if you're not sure what's appropriate, decide what, what makes these things different. Is it the value of an attribute? If so, you don't need inheritance. Or is it a fundamentally different behavior, in which case inheritance is probably what we're looking for. All right, a couple, so how do we do this? And we're gonna, don't worry, we're gonna write code together to create our first subclass together um, in a moment. Um, but we, these are the steps we go through when we want to implement a subclass. So we need to declare to Java that our subclass extends the superclass. Um, and the Java keyword to do that is literally extends, right? So we'll say like public class fill in question extends question. Um, if our subclass needs new instance variables, we'll define those like just like we normally do for classes. However, we do not redeclare the instance variables we inherit. Okay, we automatically get those. If we type them in again in the subclass, we now have two variables with the same name and potentially different values, and that's not gonna end well, okay? Sometimes we start off well, um, but then later we try to use the instance variables we inherit, um, and we can't, and so we end up redeclaring them. Visibility still matters, and we'll talk a little bit more about visibility, but private still means private. Okay, so if our superclass has a private instance variable, the subclass cannot directly access that instance variable. Okay, the meaning of private hasn't changed. So in our subclasses, we have to use the accessor methods to, um, to set and get those instance variables instead. That's how we, how we solve that issue. Um, in our subclass, we inherit all the methods. We might need to change the behavior of one or more of those methods so we can override that. I'll explain what we mean by override in a moment. Um, and there might be entirely new methods that we add. And so we can do that as, as well. So these are the steps that we're gonna go through when we do some, some live coding to make it a little bit more concrete. But I wanted to capture it here so you can see like, oh, these are the four things we do for a subclass. I wanna distinguish, compare and contrast, or really contrast what I, mean by what I mean by overriding methods compared to other things we've done. When a subclass defines a method that has the same signature 
And by signature, I mean the method name is the same and the number and type of parameters are the same. Um, so when a subclass has the same sig method with the same signature as a superclass, we say it overrides that method. It replaces that superclass behavior with some new behavior. Super powerful. We'll see lots of examples of this. Um, if we still want to, sometimes when we want to override this behavior, we still want the superclass's behavior. We just want to do a little something extra. Um, and we're going to say it is possible from a subclasses overridden method to call the superclasses method. And we use the super keyword for that. And we'll go through an example of that as well, but it is possible. This idea of overriding a method, I want to contrast with what we've been doing all year, which is overloading methods. So I want to make sure we're clear on what overriding versus overloading is. Um, if the method in the subclass has the same signature as the superclass, that's overriding. Okay, so that means a fill-in question might ha have a different method implementation than the question class. If we have multiple methods with the same name, um, but different signatures, meaning different number or type of parameters, that's overloading a method, okay? That's like two different ways to do something with different parameters. Um, that's not new. We've, we've seen this all year. Um, the most recent example, is the add method on our array list class, right? When you look at your Java quick reference, there's two add methods. One takes one parameter, which is the reference to the element to add to the list. There's another add method that takes two parameters. It takes an index, where do you wanna in, add the element and the reference to the element to add. That's overloading, two different ways to add an element to a list. Overriding is when we're, we're changing that behavior. Um, so we just wanna make sure which one we intend when we do it. And I'm gonna show you some Java techniques that, that help make sure we're actually doing what we think we're doing. Um, Cause it's easy to get these confused. All right.